been working on so many different projects this spring, it's a little hard to keep up with all the moving parts, but I uh, made a lot of headway recently in our, the project of our neighbor's lawn to food forest conversion project that I've been documenting for a while. And it's been a little bit since I've made an update, so I'd like to share some notes on that. We had a really fruitful conversation last night and some exciting new plans are in the works. So I'll show what we've done in the last few weeks and what we're thinking about doing in the very short term. Definitely feel free to check out the earlier videos in this series if you want some context or some background. But what I'd like to do in this video is really focus on how the plants are establishing that we've added in the spring. I mean, it's still very early in the season, so there's not a whole lot of dramatic development happening, but a lot of plants are leafing out a lot of the experiments that we're trialing with the ways we've planted hardwood cuttings are working nicely. We've added some sea berry and some other uh, great elements on the southern end that's starting to develop actively. So let me show you what's going on. This area under the pin oak is moving along slowly, but that makes sense. This is a more shaded and cooler spot, but certainly it's very promising. All of the hardwood cuttings, so these are all cuttings that were put in with no roots whatsoever and they're actively leafing out beautifully. I plan on making a video going into more detail on this uh, soon, but you can see some of these cuttings have flower buds on them. I'm gonna let them go for now because they're still small, but sooner than later, one of the management tasks will be to go through any of these plants that are just established as cuttings this spring and pick those flowers off so they can focus on making leaves and roots rather than flowers and fruits. I went through and added a little more mulch around these cuttings but that's definitely another management task for this spring is to make sure we keep up with mowing as needed but more than anything to really mulch around these cuttings so that as the grass starts to really come through it can compete with these and make it harder for them to establish now what i'd like to do is see between some of these cuttings especially in the shadier area under the oak can we just get away with not mowing in between them maybe a little bit right next to the driveway to keep that tidy maybe we're going to be adding in some more interesting herbaceous perennials like comfrey or lovage or some other nice pops of color and snack for them maybe a row of raspberries in here but something that i'm seeing is because it hasn't been mowed in between these areas yet we're getting a chance to see what will come up if we don't mow. And right now, these are all seedling apples. And so rather than necessarily just mowing with a mower all through here, maybe what we do is let things grow a bit taller, and then I can come through with a scythe and do some very selective mowing and select for some apples through this middle row, let them grow in the shade, see how they do, and then either graft them over or let this just be some wild bird food in here. Now in this area, we planted, uh, these are black currants again, but in this case, they actually had roots when they went in. So in here, I'm seeing that flowers are just beginning to form, but since they have a root system, we're going to allow them to make flowers and get some fruit this year. It might benefit them a bit in this establishment year to pick all these flowers off, but once they have roots, and if they seem really healthy and they're actively growing, the leaves are green and looking good, we can let them fruit and give us a crop this year. It'd be nice to be able to actually harvest a few quarts of fruit in year one in this process. That's pretty exciting. It really is amazing how easily, especially black currants, establish into a landscape. Just some mulch we'll keep adding. You know, if we do mow next to here, we'll put all the clippings next to these plants. But so far, we've had a pretty cool and moist spring. But even if we had a rough spring, these plants almost always just take. They're rooting nicely, they'll outcompete the grass. That's pretty amazing how fast that can work. Some of the work I've done in this area is I took the black currants that were here, I added more into this row. And then there's a tiny bit of a gap here, and then added in a whole bunch of rooted white currants just for some diversity of fruit. And again, these are from plants that were in our nursery that had roots, so we'll leave all of this. And talking with my neighbor last night, I let him know that come July, they'll be able to start harvesting. There's a little kid in the mix, and I bet they'll really love translucent, sour, and sweet, delicious white currants. You can imagine there'll be clusters about that long of 20 currants on each cluster everywhere you see a set of flowers. So you don't have to wait an incredibly long time 
from establishment and systems like this before you get some crops. The dormant hardwood cuttings of the willows are starting to leaf out. They got burnt a little bit. We had a pretty hard frost the other night. That's fine. They'll probably just shed some leaves and grow some more. I'm not too worried about that. If they go through some stress, what we could do is come through with pruners and just snip them back, kind of reduce the tops. But we've had enough rain, it's been cool enough, we're just gonna let them grow. And so far, uh, everyone in here is leafed out nicely. Again, management strategy here will be, uh, at some point we'll do a mowing with an electric mower on either side, return all the clippings right to them, and then add some more hay as necessary. We might let it get a little bit weedy in here. That's really not a big deal, it should work fine. This last row is all Jerusalem artichokes. We're not gonna see anything from this until mid to late May, probably early June. It's a question mark whether or not it's too wet in here for them, but I think they'll do just fine. We'll, we'll leave those on pause. Probably won't add another row of them, but we just had a neighbor offer up some uh, raspberries they were digging up, and I could imagine raspberries in here being really nice. So this is the east side of the planting, and now if we look on the south side of the fence, this is where all the new plantings have happened. Uh, we did have some currents along the fence line before, uh, so what I did in here is set off a walkway, minor walkway so we can have some access through and then added some more varieties of elderberry in here. And then this I'm really excited to see. This is a whole row of seaberry, four females and then a male, five females and then another male. So it should be good pollination. I talked about this recently in another video about digging up and transplanting these plants. It's a little bit of a rough looking transplant, but you can see they're all still standing just fine. These are the plants from that video. Loaded with uh, female flowers. It's a question whether or not there'll be enough male pollen in the air. We've got a few males that are flowering in the garden. I'm really crossing my fingers that they get pollinated in this first year. Be pretty stunning if we have seven and eight foot tall sea berry loaded with fruit in year one on this far end where it's incredibly wet, does, started doing a little bit of channeling work just to get a sense of where water can move, start aiming it through, gently moving it through. And then we banked in a bunch of varieties of willow between the neighbor's view shed and another neighbor. So eventually this will fill out to give privacy for everyone and some nice diverse beauty. So we've got the seaberry row there and then a nice generous walkway which I'm gonna talk about in a moment, our strategy for keeping this more productive than just a six foot wide strip of grass. But then we get into the next row here, and this is where some people are gonna dislike me, and that's fine, but I'll explain why I did this. Uh, there is a row of autumn olive that I grew from seed, and then directly to the south, or in front of those, are double sets of seedling hazelnut, 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 hazelnut. So what we're having here is a nitrogen fixing, succession facilitating, fruit medicine, uh, bee supporting plant that is technically an illegal invasive alien, but has only proven to be an incredible ally in the process of moving early succession contexts like lawn or disturbed fields into more complex and stable ecosystems. That nitrogen will be feeding these hazelnuts. When the hazelnuts are established and have their canopy open and really need the light, we can start cutting the autumn olive aggressively to feed the hazelnuts. But in the meantime, we'll have probably harvested many gallons of lycopene rich, exquisitely beautiful, sour and sweet fruits that we can preserve for the winter. The other strategy, the other layer to the strategy that we're gonna be implementing, maybe today or tomorrow, is sheet mulching a strip through the middle of this space. So in other words, maybe a two foot wide strip. So we'll have two feet of walkway, two feet of walkway, and then a sheet mulch strip in the middle that will be filled with annuals. And my thinking would be to grow uh, winter storage squash that will plant into compost from our chicken yards. Every two feet or so, we'll dump a pile of compost, seed it to winter squash, and then for the next month or two, we can mow very tightly these walkways, 
feed those clippings to whoever needs them, either squash or the autumn olive or the hazelnut. And then as the summer progresses, the squash will sprawl more and more, kind of fill out and block the grass quite a bit. Maybe they'll climb up the sea berry. Maybe they'll climb up the autumn olive. Certainly in the future, they can use the autumn olives as a trellis. I've had great success training winter squash up autumn olive in the past. And then in the fall, we can plant this out to a minor shrub layer in between a tall shrub layer and another tall shrub layer. Some really exciting developments is that uh, talking with my neighbor last night, we talked about the idea of, hey, what would it look like if we were to dig a pond in this corner? It's incredibly wet. The lawn drains down slope into this wet area. It's nearly impossible to mow anyway. And he has uh, skill and experience working with excavators. So we might look at when the ground dries out July or August, digging out a decently sized pond, harvesting that soil and building permanent raised beds that match this planting pattern striped out into the landscape here. That will be for another day to look at in more detail, but pretty exciting potential there. We were also brainstorming on what it could look like to add more food layers into the rest of this lawn. The agreement is for this season, we'll basically keep planting from our fence line over, over, over until around here. But he was also saying, would well, it be nice to have some apple trees or some other fruit bearing trees to enjoy? Where could we put those? And so we decided to take a look at the existing hedgerow, which is right on his property line with the other neighbors, and get a clue from what's happening in there as to what's possible in this context. It's pretty surprising what we found. So it's kind of a wild and unmanaged space in here. A lot of debris, a lot of dead trees, a lot of good habitat for wild creatures. So it's fine the way it is. But as we came over and looked, okay, so we found some European buckthorn. That's not too amazing. Nothing to write home about there. A lot of multiflora rose. Okay, we can harvest some vitamin C and some medicine from that. That's nice enough, I guess. But then, okay, here's an apple. It's probably a seedling that grew from our huge ornamental apple in our backyard. It just rains down fruit in the fall. So many birds come and get them that they probably have been planting apple seeds there's probably been millions of apple seeds put into this lawn, but they've been able to take in the hedgerow because of the multiflora rose, because of the European buckthorn. So here's an apple. There's another apple right here, another apple here, at least 10 to 20 apples right in the hedgerow. Looking further back in, it's a little hard to see from here, but there are hazelnuts, wild hazelnuts. Maybe someone planted them way back when. We can't even get to them right now, but that's probably a 20 or 30 year old hazelnut. There's a few more. There's even an apple that someone may have planted way back when. And so the exciting news is we're gonna go in and do some light thinning work in here. Maybe make some hugel mounds right on the boundary with all the debris. Maybe dig out some trenches to help things drain a bit and use that soil to work on this. And as this hedgerow gets cleared up and we reveal the existing layers of food forests that are already here, we can think about grafting these apples over to different cultivars or letting it be a wild hedgerow. Probably we'll end up grafting them, but that'll be a fun thing to document soon enough is helping to convert this hedgerow into a release of the food and medicine it already has and then thinking about adding in more to it. Could really use a little bit more light and air in here. Pretty exciting. That's more than enough for this video update. But yeah, potential for a really nice pond site in here with soil being extracted and sent out into the sunny areas on contour more or less. So we'll continue planting. Willows to provide some privacy and soak up some excess water. Sea berry to provide incredible medicine, soil fertilizing potency a little visual barrier, a trellis for vining crops, autumn olives to nurse up young hazelnuts and be considered an early succession chop and drop facilitator, and a trellis for other vining crops, spaces in between to grow some sprawling, fast growing, spreading annuals that can give us some winter storage food, 
whole lot happening and it's just the beginning of year one. A lot of tiny beings waking up and getting ready to be amazing little beings and then soon enough remarkable large beings. It's going to be exciting to continue to track this as it evolves. Um, but so far, because we have been developing really scrappy DIY skills and being our own nursery for a while and a nursery to some of you, we've been able to do this for maybe five bucks, ten bucks so far. Um, it's because we propagate our own plants, but maybe that's an opportunity for you too. Get into cuttings, get into growing plants from seed. Uh, today or tomorrow we're going to be getting a, a half a barn's worth of old hay that someone wants to clear out and we got permission to mulch more thoroughly in here so that will be free as well. The lower cost we can make this, the more we can plant so the more resiliency we have, the more there can be failure without it feeling really disappointing. It'll just be inf information. So consider that. Who are the allies in your neighborhood that might want to go in with you on becoming a small community nursery or supporting growing more plants where you live? Have fun with it. Connect more with the folks right around you. I hope you're all doing well and having a lovely spring. It's supposed to rain and snow and frost tonight, so we'll have to see what that's all about. But anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>